Mr. Zuckerberg, let me start with you. Did I hear you say in your opening statement that there's no link between mental health and social media use? Senator, what I said is I think it's important to look at the science. People widely talk about this as if that is something that's already been proven. And I think that the bulk of the scientific evidence does not support that. The bulk of the scientific evidence does not support that. The scientific evidence does not support that. Instagram. 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 I like neuroscience, I've heard of the hippocampus, and I have now spent a lot of time investigating the science to find out if the bulk of the evidence really supports no link between Instagram use and decreased mental health. There are amazing studies, including where people use Instagram whilst their brains are scanned, and I'm going to tell you about them because I think they contain really important information that pertains to my mental health and maybe yours. Hey there, I just wanted to tell you about this week's sponsor absolutely nobody because this channel is really really small but i'm trying to grow so if you think this video deserves it please consider subscribing back to the video these studies use a crucial bit of technology called functional MRI. An MRI machine is this big thing. It can measure the blood flow of different parts of your brain. More blood flowing to an area generally means it's more active. Less blood flowing to an area generally means it's less active. Functional MRIs used to research things like epilepsy and dementia and to see what Instagram does to your brain. The first study to know about is this study, where researchers got 34 adolescents who had their brain scanned whilst they used Instagram. It's important to understand the scanning environment is a really strong magnet, so people aren't able to just take their phones in with them and swipe. Instead, they look at a screen which recreates the visuals of Instagram. The results are amazing, but unsurprising. When participants viewed their own photos with lots of likes, they had increased activity in the areas of your brain that give you that rewarding feeling. Your nucleus accumbens, your caudate nucleus, and your ventral tegmental area. So when your breakfast of avocado toast with roasted pumpkin seeds gets a lot of likes, you have increased activation of these areas deep in your brain. For validity, this paper and this paper found basically the same thing. These areas are part of a crucial network in your brain, driving that feeling of social acceptance from your Instagram posts getting likes. It's an evolutionarily old mechanism telling you to try and achieve that same thing again and your age is significant in how much these central brain regions activate this study showed in 61 high school and college students that this part of the brain the nucleus accumbens increased in activity with age in high school peaking at age 16 or 17 as teenagers get older this mechanism gets stronger which fits with the idea that as you get older you become more aware and rewarded by acceptance of others, which can lead to this very real and very serious issue of problematic Instagram use. Okay, so different papers have different measures of what problematic Instagram use is, but generally speaking, it is one, the inability to reduce Instagram time if you want to, two, Instagram interfering with responsibilities like your job, studying, social relationships, three, using Instagram is an escape from negative emotions, and four, I didn't see this one anywhere, but I want to add this as a fourth, if Instagram is the last thing you do before you go to bed, and the first thing you do when you wake up. In my humble opinion, that is also problematic. I tried very, very hard to find out the percentage of people with problematic Instagram use, but the truth is, it's so dependent on how you define it. So instead, let me just bring to your attention the best attempt I found to investigate the number of people around the world, not just in the West, with an addiction to Instagram. This study here. These researchers combine 49 studies on 35 thousand people from 32 nations in seven world regions. The results show that these were the percentages of social media addiction around the world. These percentages are unsurprising, but they should be insanely freaking shocking. This is hundreds of millions of people around the world using Instagram in a problematic way, an addictive way. And all of this problematic Instagram use is associated with changes to your actual brain. This study combined 20 
28 different MRI studies and found problematic Instagram use was correlated with a reduced volume in many key regions that govern rewarding behavior. Okay, the MRI data is correlational and not causational, and the causal direction really could be either way. Those with less well-developed inhibitory control networks would have a greater propensity to become addicted to Instagram. There are a lot of psychology studies on this topic. They use questionnaires, which are imperfect, but have lots of participants, which is great. A lot of them look at correlations that measure if things are likely or unlikely to occur together. Usually, a correlation is measured with a number between minus one and one. Zero means absolutely zero correlation, like how often you water your plant and how much it rains on Jupiter. Not that it even rains on Jupiter. Totally unrelated things. Towards one means a correlation, so something like height and arm span, and towards negative one means a negative correlation, so something like the amount of time you spend on social media and the quantity of time you have to do hobbies that you want to do opposite. And remember that correlation does not equal causation. Things can occur together without one causing the other. So with all that in mind, what is the correlation of Instagram use and negative mental health? Where on our scale does this fall? This study collected a questionnaire from over 1,000 people between the ages of 18 and 35. They looked at the correlation of Instagram use with the level of body comparisons and depressive symptoms. High Instagram use and making lots of body comparisons had a correlation of 0.27. High Instagram use and depressive symptoms had a correlation of 0.14, both a low level of positive correlation. Not massive, like everyone who uses Instagram will definitely have these things, but there is a positive correlation there. Is this causation or just a coincidental correlation? relation. That's like a bit tricky to unpack as Instagram could be causing these things, but people with these things could also just be using Instagram more. I found this study that just came out that amalgamated 114 studies and found that 78% of studies revealed that excessive or passive social media use was associated with increased depression, increased anxiety, and increased loneliness. But they also found that 33% reported some positive impacts where purposeful, intentional use of social media contributed to improvements in mental health and well-being. I think from all of these papers, it's quite clear that Zuckerberg is simply not correct. The scientific evidence does not support that. The bulk of the evidence supports the idea that Instagram use increases the likelihood of making unhealthy body comparisons and having a level of depression or anxiety that all increase the more you use Instagram and the more prone you are to negative mental health. It's not guaranteed these things will happen at all, but it's a bit more likely. I think more people should know about these studies and they should know they exist and that Instagram, especially using Instagram a lot, is not risk free. It's not the source of all mental health issues, but it carries a small level of risk and Instagram is fully aware of this. Here, I actually did a little bit of investigative journalism. The ice cream machines at McDonald's always seem to be down. Instagram sent out a huge survey to their users and they analyzed the data and presented it internally to their staff. We have access to these decks now as they were leaked by a whistleblower called Francis Haugen and published by the Wall Street Journal, after which Instagram published them online with some redacted names and some annotations adding what they really meant by the slides. Obviously with completely zero bias or ulterior motive. Anyway, Instagram found roughly the same as the previous studies that I've discussed. Instagram is not risk-free, damage-free, and maybe even a little more sinister. I'm not gonna put the actual slide here as I don't want to get copyrighted or whatever, but I've recreated one of their key slides. Deck two, page 25, you can go check it out if you want to see the original. What this data really shows is that about 12% of respondents satisfied with their life say Instagram makes them feel worse. And this percentage increases to about 30% for people dissatisfied with their life. This is hundreds of millions of people. Now, it's important to remember, however, dissatisfied people with their life may feel going to work makes them feel worse or 
Filling their car up at a petrol station makes them feel worse. That's how dissatisfaction works. But this graph and data is another piece of evidence indicating something problematic about Instagram itself. The scientific evidence does not support that. And the reasons for this are kind of old news now and maybe even a little bit boring. It's machine learning algorithms that are written by very smart people with the only goal of being make people use this thing as much as goddamn possible. Their engineers writing this stuff don't fully understand the internal mechanisms. Their algorithms are trained to notice patterns in the data that can then choose what will keep someone using the platform far more successfully than a human trying to choose. This in my humble opinion is why Instagram is so goddamn polarized. The algorithm has learned that unhinged takes on one side or the other either satisfies or enrages people and this makes them engage more which drives up usage time which drives up their profits through advertising because now they have more of your time to sell every next second they convince you to stay swiping their profits rise if and when they find a way to keep us scrolling every second of every single day and night for the rest of our lives they will implement it immediately and then buying themselves mansions and cars and private planes whilst we sit in a chair swiping away. Or watching a YouTube video. Before Instagram, there was Facebook, and before that, TV, and before that, radio. And at every stage, society worried about these things turning everyone into zombies. But I think a distinctive difference about Instagram is the fact you can carry it around with you everywhere. What's my conclusion? Instagram is not free. You pay for it with your time. I think it's good to think about if Instagram charged a monthly fee, how much would you be willing to pay for it? If the answer is very little, but you use it quite a lot, I think that's quite interesting to ponder. Ultimately, Instagram won't make any changes that would probably improve lives and maybe even save some lives because it would damage their profit margins. It is up to us to educate ourselves and choose actions to improve our lives. I absolutely recognize that Instagram, firstly, has been amazing for many people who have grown huge businesses and made loads of money from using Instagram. And it's also just one addictive app among many. You know, Twitter, Reddit, my beloved YouTube. All of these apps have similar algorithms to drive this engagement that could have you know, similar criticisms that I've said here. I made another video looking at the specific neuroimaging around TikTok, so I'll link that somewhere. Thank you so much for watching until this late stage of the video. I hope you found it as interesting to watch as I did to make. If you have a friend who you think uses Instagram too much, maybe send them this video and please leave your comments to let me know what you thought about this. Luckily, this channel's small, so I can reply to everyone. I've also set up a Patreon now as I'm trying to see if I can support myself a bit making these videos and I'm eagerly awaiting my first Patreon, so maybe that will be you. If so, thank you very much. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one.